Good morning and welcome to worship with the Presbyterian Church of Wyoming. I'm Becky Bosarge, Director of Pastoral Care. Today in worship, we're going to focus on a passage of scripture from Genesis, uh, the one where Jacob is out in the desert and he goes to sleep and he has a dream and receives a vision from God. And when he wakes up, he says, this is the house of God, the gate of heaven. Friends, we may not be in a church building, but we are in the house of God. Open your hearts for our call to worship. Good morning, I'm Bill Morley, a longtime member and a volunteer with the youth here at Wyoming Presbyterian Church. Welcome for another chance to worship our Lord together. Today we're gonna to hear about Jacob and his ladder. And as, old, as the old hymn goes, we're called to climb this ladder. And of course, the first rung is calling the Lord into our life. This morning, our call to worship comes from Psalm 139. Please join me. Inescapable God, you know our every move, our sitting and our rising. Discerning God, you know our most intimate thoughts. Everywhere, God, wherever we are, you are there. We are here. Search us, know us, and lead us into life. Let us worship God. continue to climb the ladder and move to the next rung, we are called to confession. Today's confession is a little different. I'm not going to give you the words for your conversation with God. I will simply help you prepare for that conversation. This morning, our prayer of confession is called a body prayer called palms up, palms down. Let us pray. 
close your eyes if you are comfortable and place your hands on your stomach. Take a few deep breaths, centering yourself, grounding yourself in life-giving breath. Lower your hands to your lap, palms down, as a symbol of releasing to God anything you would like to confess for yourself or on behalf of the world, saying, Holy One, today I give you Turn your palms over as a gesture of receptivity and openness to the God who comes, who gives, who heals, who forgives, who loves. Imagine that God holding your hands, filling your hands with the grace you need, the grace humanity needs. What grace does God offer you today? Place your hands over your heart and give thanks for God's gracious goodness, freely given to you and to the world. Gently open your eyes. Amen. Know that you are forgiven and accept that loving grace so freely given. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And with that grace comes a wonderful gift that we might share with all in the form of a peace that passes all understanding. May the deep and astounding peace of Christ be with us all. Peace be with you. Hello, this is Adam Hayden, the Youth Program Director here at PCW. Want to invite all the kids to come gather around. Want to share something that I think is pretty cool with you. You know, sometimes people think that you have to be really good or perfect for God to use you. You have to go to some school or get some degree or be just the right height or say all the right words. But that's not true. God can use us today, right now, no matter what. Even, even if we just got in a fight with our brother or sister, even if we just did something wrong to our mom or dad, God can use us in this moment, even if we just did something that wasn't very honoring to God. We don't have to be good or be perfect for God to use us. We just have to be willing just to open up and say, God, I'm here. I want to love others. I want to care for others, and I want you to help me. And God will, and God can work through us and use us to send God's love out to others. So let's say a prayer and try to do that this week, all right? All right, if it helps you to close your eyes and bow your head and put your hands together, you can do that, okay? And you can repeat after me. Good morning, God. Will you please help me accept you and allow you to work through me? Amen. Good morning. I'm Rob Keeler, elder at PCW. It's my joy and honor to worship with you this morning. Will you join me now in our prayer for illumination? Let us ask the Spirit to speak to us through our reading this morning. Our prayer for illumination is the words to a song found in the Glory to God hymnal. Listen to the word that God has spoken. Let us pray. Listen to the word that God has spoken. Listen to the one who is close at hand. Listen to the voice behind creation. Listen even if you do not understand. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 to 22. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down at that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth. The top of it 
reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you, and I will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel. But the name of the city was Luz at first. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear, so that I can come again to my Father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house, and all that you give me, I surely give one-tenth to you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jacob's story is my favorite of the stories of Israel's patriarchs and matriarchs. I like it because he's a very complicated person, uh, a very surprising bearer of the covenant. He connives, he schemes, He's opportunistic even from the very beginning when he grabbed at his brother Esau's heel in utero trying to get out first. When we meet him at this point of his story, the story that we heard read today, he's been sent away from his family after having tricked his father and brother into giving him the blessing that rightfully belongs to Esau as the older brother. Esau is angry, threatens Jacob's life, and so Jacob is sent away. He's on the run. Today, as we pick up his story, we're going to try something a little bit different from the usual sermon. I will guide us in sort of a prayerful meditation on this story, and I'm going to invite you to use your senses and your imagination to put yourself in the story. Try and imagine what it would have been like to be Jacob, and maybe experience his story in a fresh way. So how it's going to work is I'm going to read sections of the scripture. Uh, I'll read them very slowly. I'll offer maybe a little bit of comment, a little bit of questions, and give you a bit of time to reflect. If you like, you can close your eyes or keep them open. If you would like to gather a pen and some paper so you can journal as you reflect, that's great too. So let's begin by growing still and quiet, but alert and curious. Assume that the Spirit has something to say to you today through Jacob's story. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night, because the sun had set. Can you imagine the cooling air, the stars coming out? Can you picture Jacob settling in for the night? Now maybe when he set out, 
He was, of course, afraid, but maybe he was also angry. Maybe he was full of self-justification. But now as the day is drawing to an end and the night is drawing close, reality might be setting in. What do you imagine he is thinking and feeling? Why did he want that blessing so badly? What did he need? What was he afraid of? What in him was unsatisfied? Allow yourself to wonder about that for just a moment. The story goes on. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angel of God were ascending and descending on it. Jacob, the schemer, the grasper, that one receives a vision from God. The one who tries to always be in control, emotionally and physically exhausted, fearful and guilty, perhaps is vulnerable enough for the first time and available enough to God for the first time in a way that he's never been before. Can you relate to Jacob? Have difficult circumstances ever opened you to God's presence in ways you normally weren't when you were feeling confident and in control. <clears throat> the dream goes on. Try and imagine <clears throat> what it might be like to hear this in a dream. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. Now, maybe Jacob has heard the stories, but now he encounters God for the first time. The one who is estranged is reminded that he is a descendant of this family. The one who is alone is reminded that he has never been and will never be alone. The one who felt he had to do whatever he could to take care of himself is reminded that God is the one who gives the blessing. The one with an uncertain future is given a promise of a future. Right now, what in your life looks bleak? What in the world looks hopeless, divided, broken, irredeemable? How might it look to God? Could you allow God to give you a different vision?
Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head, and he set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in the way that I go and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God, and this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give one-tenth to you. Use your senses again to imagine this scene. See the sun peeking up over the horizon, the growing light. Feel the cool morning air. Hear the birds waking up. Feel that stone and maybe your sore head and sore neck from having slept on it all night. Feel the stone as you set it up as a pillar. Hear the oil as it's poured out. Smell its fragrance. Jacob's encounter with God has turned him into a worshiper. And so he marks this as a holy moment and a holy place. He makes a vow, his part of the agreement that God has already made with him. This morning, in this holy place, what commitment is God making to you? What commitment would you like to make to God? Friends, what did the Spirit say to you as you prayed with this story today? What stood out to you? Maybe you noticed God's determination to bless the world through this family. Maybe you heard that God is always making surprising choices of who will participate in God's work to bless the world. Maybe you might think you're one of those surprising choices. Maybe you heard an invitation to let your guard down, to let God in. Now, you might think after this experience that Jacob would be completely reformed, but he wasn't. Whatever that deep-seated thing was in him that drove him, it didn't magically disappear. He would have more moments like this, but he continued to have moments when that deep-seated need to grasp and to protect himself got the better of him. And I think that's probably true for all of us. So maybe you heard that our call is to continue to struggle, continue to wrestle, continue to worship, continue to dream, continue to grow with God. Will you pray with me? God of the past, God of the future, Even as we grasp for what we think will satisfy us, even when it seems unlikely or impossible, may we know our lives and this world as a place of your blessing. May we then go, even in our imperfection and uncertainty, as your committed and enlivened people, in awe that you come to us, blessed to be a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
When Jacob dreamed, he was given an image of a stairway or a ladder reaching from earth to heaven. Angels first ascended, perhaps carrying all of Jacob's worries and struggles to God. Then they descended, perhaps carrying God's comfort and assurance to Jacob. So this morning, as we pray together, let's pray with that image. Let us imagine that ladder. Let us allow our concerns to be carried to God, and let us receive God's presence and healing and encouragement and comfort. Let us pray. Covenant maker, sometimes it is so surprising to think that you ask us to partner with you as you pour out your love on a hurting world. Your choices are so surprising. We come to you today alert to your presence and ready to pray. We offer our concerns and we ask that your angels carry them to you. We offer our concerns for the rising cases of COVID-19 and all that means, the illness, the grief, the death, the anxiety. Our concerns about the violence in our world, violent words, violent actions, violence inflicted through neglect, the violence of over busyness and unreasonable expectations. Our concern for racial, economic, and climate justice, for the well being of the earth and all its peoples. And our concern for those we know and love, whose names we now offer in the silence. Holy One, we pray that these concerns are carried to you into your loving presence, into the hope of a different future. And we also open our hearts and hands, giving thanks for all the gifts and graces that your angels carry to us from you. We're grateful for the small blessings, funny conversations, loving interactions. We're grateful for that first delicious taste of summer fruit. We're grateful for any encouragement that keeps us going. For urgent voices which refuse to be quiet, refuse to allow us to be content with the status quo. We're grateful for this faith community, its loving spirit, its determination, its faithfulness, its desire to grow, and we'll, we're grateful for tomorrow when we start a new chapter and we pray for our new pastors, Anne and Gray Marshall. And we are grateful for the gifts and graces that we each have experienced this past week, which we name now in the silence. God, we hear you say that you are faithful, that you are with us, that you'll keep us, that you will go with us wherever and however we go. May that truth take root in us, assure us, and free us to act as faithfully as you do. Now we join our voices together to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, Jacob found the house of God, the gate of heaven, when he was out in the desert, alone, asleep. Thomas Merton wrote that the gate of heaven is everywhere. So this week, I invite you to look for that gate of heaven. Look for the house of God. Open your heart. Be available enough, vulnerable enough to God to notice it. And as you do, may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit go with you. Go in peace.